Good afternoon. This is Reverend Parker here for another Community Baptist Choir Bible Study. Yes, Lord, I'm just so thankful that God has me here again today. Yes, I thank God for all that he does for me each and every day. And you should thank God, too, because he woke you up clothed in your right mind. He woke you up and started you on your way. He watched over you last night, and God is still with you. Yes, we're still on a journey, and we must journey with God. We need to ask God to go before us so that he can make our crooked path straight. We need to understand that we serve a God that loves us with an unconditional love. And as we get into our uh, lesson today, we're going to have a, a song. I mean, I'm going to read a song, and then we'll get into prayer, and then we'll get into our lesson. Amen. I'm going to read Psalms 100. That's Psalms 100. And I have the King James Version, but whatever version you have, read along with us. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all generations. Uh, we just read Psalms 100 in its entirety, listen to the hearing and reading of this most holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Father God, because we don't say thank you enough. We don't say thank you, Father God, for the little things you do. We want to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We want to thank you, Father God, for always being there with us, Lord. Even when we don't even recognize it, Lord, you are right there with us, oh God, meeting us along the way. And so, Father God, we want to say thank you. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the creator of all things, those visible and invisible, Lord. We just lift them all up to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you right now. Father God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins and they be made. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you wash us and cleanse us in your blood. Father God, we want to say thank you, Lord, for just loving on each and every one of us. Father, we ask you to watch about Pastor, Father God, and continue to build him up where he's torn down. Continue, Father God, to watch over his family, Lord. Uh, just continue to just be uh, with him everywhere he goes. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to be with uh, Sister Maria and her family, Lord, and continue to be with her daughter, Hannah, Lord, her son, Trevor, Lord, just lifting them up, Lord. Our family in Costa Rica, Father, we ask for God in the name of Jesus. We continue to strengthen them, oh God, that they continue to trust in you, Father God, to believe in you, and oh Lord, and to live with your holy name. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Continue to be with all our choir members, Lord, and all of those, oh Lord, who will be watching this video later on, Father God, we just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, to be with them all, Father God, because you made a way out of no way. Father God, we're still able to uh, deliver your word, Lord, but we're still able to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, that Savior, oh, that saved a wretch like me. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, continue to be with me, continue to uh, strengthen me, build me up where I'm torn now, Lord, as I decrease, Father God, you increase within us, oh, Lord. Yes, Lord, we need you each and every day. We need a Savior, Father God. We ask you to be with all communities out there members, Lord. Uh, Lord, that they continue to praise and worship. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. And so our lesson comes today from uh, Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 22nd verse, down to the 34th. And uh, I have the King James Version, but whatever version you have, we along with us. And we're about to read together and it reads. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, talk with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Oh, thank you, Lord. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, 
be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if be thou bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And Peter was come down uh, out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind most risky, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And when they were in the ship, came and worshiped, saying, worship, him, worship him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone over, they came to the land of Jezebel. I just read verses. 14, chapter 14 of Matthew, 22nd verse to the 34th. Listen to the very meaning of this word. And the key verse is Matthew, the 14th chapter, 27th verse, which is, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Ah, I love this. And so let us get into the lesson. The lesson is a good one. And so let us get into it, amen? And let us all read together. Paul Turner, the eminent Swiss doctor, wrote in his book, The Adventure of Work, a profound assessment of the Christian life. Life is an adventure directed by God. The seed of life changing faith is contained in such a view. It could be the difference between confidence a warning, light, or a timid, fretful one. When confronted with perplexity, it can be the hinge upon which swings the response of either fear or faith. Fear comes when we are overwhelmed by the magnitude and implication of a situation. It swells to paralyzing proportion when we think of the possibility of a disastrous consequence. But once we understand and embrace the truth that God is indeed in charge of our circumstances and has equipped us for every challenge, it is amazing how faith in Christ can change our outlook. Life isn't risk-free, but God has set a divine course for every believer that, who, that he oversees and directs with perfect wisdom and love. Our faith is in his faithfulness, oh thank the Lord, to us. His, in his power that works in our behalf, on our behalf. In his grace that provides all our needs. God is in charge. Life is an exciting journey in trusting him as our God and companion. Begin the adventure today and drop your fears at his feet. He won't let you down. Amen. And all together, the Father, Father, there may be hard times ahead, but I know that you are directing my path, and I will not fear the future. Ah, amen. And so let's gleam over this lesson. The name of this lesson is The Fantastic Adventure. The Fantastic Adventure. I will almost call this the Fantastic Voyage. <laughs> But Lord, thank you. Okay. And as we can see here, when we read Matthew uh, chapter 14, verses 22 to 34, Jesus told them to go on to the other side. Jesus told them to uh, uh, go to the other side because they had fed 5,000 people, women, uh, men, women, and children. They had done all of this. Jesus had done this miracle. And not only that, they collected 12 basket loads of leftovers. And we need to understand that during our changing uh, our life journey with Christ, uh, we can have a full, full meaning of life. It says here that the seed of life changing. Faith is contained in such a view, which is life is a venture with God. Now, it says it can be the difference between 
confident and rewarding life or a timid threat. When confronted with perplexity, it can be the hinge upon which swings the response of either fear or faith. And we know that God did not give us the spirit of fear. And 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God did not give us this, this spirit, even though we're born through a pandemic right now. We can place this same lesson in our life right now. We don't have to be fearful. It's the devil. And I'll say it's the evil spirit, the prince of the powers of the air, that is affecting what's going on today. All he has to do is get people to fear. And you have to be fearing anything and everything. And so right now, he got people fearful of COVID-19. When if you know, coronavirus has been around a long time. This is nothing to fear. We need to just do what is right, and that's protect yourself. We need to give your life to Christ and trust in the Lord. We need to understand that we have to have faith in God. And first Corinthians uh, 1 and 9, it says, God is faithful by whom ye were called into unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says here in this lesson that fear comes when we are overwhelmed by the magnitude and implications of the situation. And the magnitude and the situation of things that are going on today has gone haywire, crazy, that it's affecting the whole world, everybody's world. It's affecting the world so much that uh, everything was shut down for a while. And then as things, they try to get things to uh, to be uh, start back up again, they found that uh, people don't want to work with. <laughs> There's so many people that are unemployed still. There's so many job openings that people are going, no, I ain't doing that work no more. I'm sorry. And that's why it's overwhelming the, the magnitude and the implication of the situation that was caused by a little virus. That uh, someone, some man, some person let loose in the atmosphere. And that's what the devil breeds on. He, he, he loves terror. He loves to terrorize us. He tries to terrorize us in our dream. He tries to terrorize us in our life. He tries to terrorize us in, in our family lives. There's a constant uh, overwhelming of a magnitude of implications of situation. It, it swells up so bad that it's paralyzing in proportion. It's paralyzing people. People are just full of anxiety right now. People don't know which way to go when they need to go straight to God with everything. That's why God, the Bible says that we need to be prayed up. For. We need to be prayed up and prayed without ceasing. We need to always uh, understand that God is gonna, has made a way. And God knows what's going on. Trust me, God knows what's going on. Uh, it says here that it swells with paralyzing proportion when we think of the possibility of the disastrous consequences. Well, we've seen the consequences. The consequences are still here, you know? And they're gonna be an epidemic. Gonna, every time something new comes out, they're gonna pump it out. And this is the next, next thing that's gonna do something to you. Well, we're all gonna die someday. Don't just think we're gonna live it forever. Not that any of us are ready to check out, but we don't make that call. And so we need to understand that uh, we need to embrace God's truth. And it says here, but once we understand and embrace the truth that God is indeed in charge of our circumstances and has equipped us for every challenge, you are equipped for every challenge that is coming in this world. Every challenge. God has given you. God has given us the answer. And so we need to be in the word of God to know. They said it is amazing how faith in Christ can change uh, our outlook. When you have faith in Christ and when you're trusting and believing in God, you know that you don't have to fear because it's not coming from God. God doesn't deal in fear. 
God is victorious. He's already defeating the devil, defeated the devil, and the victory is already won. The thing is, and I don't know if any of you guys think of this sometimes, but when God told Jeremiah, I knew you before I want you, meaning that we are spiritual beings because God is spirit, and so we are spiritual beings having human experiences. It's, and that's the question is, how come we can't go back to remembering how we were when we were spirit? And that's what God is trying to get. He's getting trying to get you guys walking with me. You're my children, those who've been born again. You're all my children. But those who have been born again, those who believe in me, those who confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that I have came down on earth, that I walked among you, that I ate among you, that I fed you 5,000 uh, uh, men, women, and children, that I done these things, that I healed the lame, that I healed the blind, that I did all of these wondrous things. And yet, uh, you don't have the faith of a mustard seed. See, Peter had a little faith when he walked out on that water. He had a short burst of faith until he started looking around and seeing the storm that, uh, that was around him, that perpetual storm that took uh, the, the wind blowing and the water swelling up around him. And he cried out, Lord, save me, because he was starting to sink. But he didn't have to do that if he would just kept his eyes on Jesus. And that's what we need to do. It says here, life isn't risk-free. Jesus already told us in John 16 uh, and 33 that we will have uh, tribulation. But he overcome. He said, be a good cheer because I overcome him. He said, let your heart uh, not be troubled because I overcome him. We have to be overcomers and walk in that victory that God has already uh, predestined for us. Um, it says here that, uh, but God has set a divine force on every believer that he oversees and directs with the perfect wisdom and a perfect love. Meaning God has already set the course of your life. He knows everything that you're going to go through. And so that's why we need to be uh, tied into him. That's why we need to be uh, prayed up and asking him constantly, daily, Lord, lead me, guide me in the way you would have me to go. Oh, God, I know you hear me. I know you see me. You need to understand that God hears you and he sees you and he knows what you're going through. Uh, in Matthew 6 and 32, it says, mm -hmm. Jesus said, uh, for after all these things do the Gentiles see. All the things we need, God already knows. This is for your heavenly Father knoweth that you need, you have need of all the things. All the things that we need, God already knows. And it's already there because he's given us all uh, we have all spiritual blessings. He's given us all spiritual blessings. It says that these are my three. Uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, that who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we need to understand that God knows us. And God is a faithful God. God is so faithful to us. Even our unfaithfulness God still loves us because he knows us. He knows that we're messed up. It's we that don't know that we messed up. We always think we are good. I'm good to go. Me, myself, and I. Well, me, myself, and I ain't all good. And so we need to uh, have faith in God. They said our faith is in his faithfulness, not ours. Uh, his faithfulness to us. In his power, because he had that one working power, he's all by God, that works in our behalf, in his grace. Lord, thank you for your grace, um, because he provides all our need. Uh, God is in charge, and yes, he is in charge of all things. Uh, we need rain, we need to pray. You need healing, you need to pray. 
And God says, I came to you uh, to give you life. In John 10.10, uh, 10, I think that is. Uh, let's see. Uh, John 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm okay. Yes. Uh, 10, uh, yeah, yes, 10, 10. He says, the thief cometh, uh, but to steal and kill and destroy. I am that they not have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God is letting us know uh, that we have an abundant life with him. And so we need to understand that we have a God that is giving us abundant, an abundant life. He wants us to have an abundant life here. Even though this is not our final destination, we have a heavenly place that we will go, those who are born again. We need to understand that we have a God that we need to trust in. And, 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 and that comes from Proverbs 3, uh, chapter 5 and 6, when it says, um, Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord. It says, trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to our own uh, understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. See, that path of righteousness, that path through which we should stay on with him. He says, because why? Because God is our guide and our companion. Just like you, you have a companion in your puppy dog. He's your, he's your companion. He, he, it, some people have a guide dog. You know, they have a guide dog for those who are blind. You know, they walk around and he leads them. He makes them stop. God is better than that. He is greater than that. And so we can, those who haven't been born again, those who don't understand that God is that tree of life. Thank you, Lord. And so we need to understand that he's given us that eternal life. Uh, it says, begin the adventure today and drop your fears at his feet. God said that we can cast all our cares and burdens upon him. First Peter uh, 5 and 7. I'm going to make sure I got the right page to change. Hold on, hold on. Might be changed. Hold on. I'm sorry. I get caught up. I get caught up. Let's change. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's first Peter. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was me. First Peter uh, 5 and 7. I was right. Um, it says that we can cast all our cares uh, upon him, for he cares for us. He cares for you. He cares. But we need to humble ourselves before, uh, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt us in due time. And so we need to understand that we can take God is saying, go my way. That's why he said, place them at my feet. Drop all your fears at my feet. I ain't scared. I already have the victory. What are you scared about? He won't let you down. God will never, he hasn't let us down at all. He's never let me down. I'm so glad. I don't know about you. If God has ever let you down, you may be a critical wrong God. God never lets you down. Um, and so, and so, I, I just want to say, you need to just continue to, to pray to God, continue to stay on this voyage with our Lord and Savior, continue to be with him, uh, knowing that God has made a way for us today, knowing that God is in our life, uh, and he's a living Savior, he's a living God. We don't pray to a dead God. We, you got to know that. You got to understand that when things are going wrong, you need to call on God. It says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, I close here. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. We are the churches. God is that peace that we love. Uh, we need to understand that God will give you his peace. And so, by the grace of God, 
we just continue to lean on it and continue to trust it in and continue to uh, uh, rejoice in the adventure that we're going through. Amen. And so, yeah, we're going to have some hard times, but they're not that hard. Nothing's too big for God. And so you need to understand that you can go to him in all things. Amen. I'm Reverend Parker saying thank you again for another choir Bible study. We're so glad that you're able to join us. We just ask God to ooh, continue to be with you, Lord have mercy. Continue to be with you and have to provide us. And uh, continue to lead in God. Know that you've got the day in Jesus Christ. Amen. And God bless you. We'll see you again, Lord, if the Lord will. Uh, God bless you. God bless you.